Today is a tale of two double O's, or grand concert body guitars, from Martin. We're going to be breaking down the tonal differences between the 0028 and the 0018. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKing. You can find us online at alamomusic.com, hailing from beautiful San Antonio, Texas. If you are new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support us, visit our spring store linked in the description for custom swag like this groovy shirt that I'm wearing, and check out our podcast. It's called the Fretboard Confessional. So this is a fun video to do because it's a really good demonstration of the power of tone woods in an acoustic guitar. Now there's all sorts of theories out there about how much of a difference tone woods make. So today we're looking at the same builder and the same body with basically the same specifications with one important difference and that is the wood used on the back and sides or as I like to call it the EQ of the guitar. So this is a standard series, Martin 0028 and 0018. Now the 00 is also called the Grand Concert in Martin's lineup, and there aren't a, a lot of models in the lineup uh, overall that are 00s. There's, I think, one in the X series, there's one in the Modern Deluxe, there's these two that are in the standard series, and they're great guitars. They slot under a triple O, which is the more popular size that shares the same basic footprint as an OM guitar. And that makes them a, a smaller body, more intimate guitar that excels at things like light strumming and finger picking, giving you a lot of volume with very little input. But it also means it's not going to be a huge strumming champion or perfect for flat picking. It's a guitar that needs to be dealt with with a deft touch. If you lay into it too much, it kind of gets overwhelmed. So that's what you get out of the body shape. Let's talk about the specifications on this guitar because they are identical, identical one to the next. The body shape is the same. It's a double O or grand concert, like I said. It's a 24.9 inch scale length. They both have the same uh, shape of neck. They both have the same uh, nut width, which is one and three quarter inch. They have the same bracing, which is the scalloped X bracing. It's quarter inch wide. Um, everything is basically the same on these. They both feature Sitka spruce tops with toner applied to give them that nice honey look. Um, it's really only the aesthetics uh, that change as far as those appointments and of course the back and side wood that I mentioned at the outset. So this has the diamond squares. This has the old 18 style inlay. They both have open gear tuners. They both have rosewood veneer on the headstocks, yada, yada, yada. This one has a uh, black binding. This one has uh, a nice cream white binding. Is it black or faux tortoise shell? I guess it's black. It seems like it used to be faux tortoise shell. Anyways, faux tortoise shell for the pit guards, but no faux tortoises were harmed in the making of this video, just at the Martin factory. This is where things get interesting. The back and sides. So on an 18, if you're not familiar with the 18 series in Martin's lineup, I, sh I should say 18s. I don't know. It's a series within a series because these are both standard series, but 18s are their own thing and 28s are their own thing. It's kind of confusing. It's history. It is what it is. So the 18s uh, feature Sitka Spruce with Honduran Mahogany back and sides. I specify Honduran Mahogany. If you know, you know. Um, the 28s feature East Indian Rosewood back and sides, you know, and I specify East Indian Rosewood because it's not Brazilian. This isn't 1940, come on. So what are you gonna get? We often describe these as having very different tonal profiles. They're both paired with a Sitka Spruce top. So the initial response you're getting from the guitars, you would think would be the same. Sitka Spruce has a lot of dynamics to it. You're gonna have a lot of brightness and sustain coming out of the top. But what happens and, and how does that character change when the back and sides change? Does it really make a difference? Now, manufacturers of guitars that are primarily laminate or layered on the back and sides will tell you, oh, it doesn't make any difference at all if it's layered or solid wood. That's snake oil, people. It actually makes a big difference, as we're going to demonstrate in this video. So I'll tell you what, I'm just going to let you hear it for yourself, and then we'll talk about it on the other side of the demo. So check it out.
So there you have the comparison between these two guitars. Did you hear the differences? Let's talk about it. So this we'll start with is the 0018, right? Spruce, mahogany, great guitar. Really fantastic little small body for Martin. I'm a big fan of the triple 018, which is just a little bit bigger. Now mahogany typically gives you a nice dry tone. What do we mean by dry? We mean that there's not a lot of rich overtones. You basically get the fundamental of the note and not a lot of other stuff that's going on when you let a chord kind of ring out. You don't get a lot of bass, you don't get a lot of treble, you get a pronounced mid-range. That's what the back and sides are doing as it's working with the top to produce the sound of the guitar. You have to consider an acoustic guitar is basically like a speaker box of strings on it. It's a speaker pump effectively. So as the top vibrates, it's creating vibrations throughout the body of the guitar and inside of the guitar, and the back and sides are influencing that final sound that you get. So when you do mahogany on a guitar, you're getting that fundamental note, you're not getting very strong bass or treble. Now that confuses some people because the sound that you get is warm, and that's how it's often described anyway. That warmth is the mid-range. And what's great about it is it can kind of cut through a mix if you're playing in a band setting. In this particular guitar with the smaller body, here's what we heard in the room and on the recording as I played. It kind of had a, a, a dampening effect in comparison to the 0028. And what I mean by that is the guitar seemed to kind of tap out volume wise if I tried to strum it a little bit earlier. And it may not actually have been earlier, but it sounded earlier because it didn't have that, that leading edge treble to give you kind of that zing of the note. You just had that mid range. So as a strumming or flat picking guitar, you probably want to look elsewhere, but for a finger picking guitar that you want to play, particularly like bluesy runs on, I really like spruce and mahogany as a great pairing for tone wood. So I really like this guitar for that nice dry sound. And what I would do if I owned this guitar is probably take these strings off and put on some of Martin's uh, Monell strings from their retro series, because that also is a vintage style string that uh, accentuates the fundamentals. So I find that it works really, really well with mahogany. But that's the wonderful mid-range sound that you got out of this. And that was varied considerably with this, the Rosewood 0028. Pretty popular guitar, like its larger Triple O 28 and OM 28 siblings in that standard series. This guitar, again, the exact same specifications. Okay, this one has a volute on the back of the headstock and the 18 doesn't, but I don't think that's where the differences in tone are coming from. The difference with the Rosewood, to my ear, is pretty astronomical. You get this nice, very present low end, and you get that really poppy high end, and the scooped mid-range kind of makes a very pleasant overall tone. And the nice thing is that if you hold out a chord, you're going to hear all of those overtones from the body of the guitar that Rosewood produces. So it's a really, really nice guitar. Now, who are these for? It's a question I get asked a lot. You'll hear two different terms uh, when utilize, uh, when talking about these guitars. One is that singer-songwriters often will utilize um, a Rosewood and Spruce guitar, but some people say singer-songwriters really like Mahogany and Spruce, so which is it? I think it's one, whichever your ear prefers. That's the most important thing. If you're playing and it's just you and you like the warmth of Mahogany or you like those overtones and bass and treble of Rosewood, then you're right. That's the, that's the answer. The other part of it though is in context, what works best when. So if you are playing without amplification, without EQs and pickups and all of that stuff in a setting with other musicians, the Rosewood guitar with a scooped mid-range can get lost in the mix. Now the brightness can sometimes help overcome that um, and allow it to really come forward. But generally speaking, you're going to be part of the rest of that sound with a Rosewood guitar. So if you're solo playing, you have a lot of opportunity and options here with the Rosewood because you have the overtones and the richness that kind of will just fill out the lack of musicians around you. But if you're playing with others, it just kind of sits in the mix. Mahogany, on the other hand, is like a really good guitar, electric guitar with a really good tube amp that's kind of saturated and peaking in the mids. You can cut through the mix. So if you're playing single line stuff with other musicians playing, you'll be heard 
with a mahogany guitar because you don't have the bass and you don't have that trouble. You just have this rounded kind of middle of the EQ curve note that will kind of cut through. And so in that context, if you're looking for something and you need to stand out a bit, mahogany and spruce can work really, really well. And that's from an EQ standpoint, not talking about volume and other things. But I think it really should come down to what you like. So when we did the demonstration, the question to ask yourself is, what did your ear like? And then the next question is, which one do you like aesthetically? I like both, but I gotta admit, the rosewood on this guitar is just beautiful. I'm a real big fan of the, the 28 series in total. Just the double O, the triple O, the OM, the HD, I like the 28s. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Could you hear the substantial difference that we heard when we were doing the recording? What did you hear and which do you prefer? Now, if you are interested in either of these guitars, the 28 is more expensive um, by about $700 uh, currently than the uh, 0018. So that works out to, I think, $27.99 versus $34.99 at the time that we are shooting this video. You wanna make sure you visit our website at alamomusic.com because as we've learned the past few years, those prices are subject to change. Um, but I really, you know, $700 is not nothing. Go with the guitar that you really like, I think is the best advice that you can be given. So if you're interested in either of these, you want to go to that website, alamomusic.com. You can see all the specifications that I talked about, the stuff that I didn't mention in the video. Um, you can also check out the photography we've done, and you can chat with someone live on the website. It's a real person, and they will help you find the right guitar and the right payment options or whatever you need to suit your needs. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure you have the right guitar for you. Don't get a good deal on the wrong guitar. Make sure that you get the right one. If you're new to our channel, make sure that you subscribe, you turn on notifications, you like our videos, and you keep coming back for more. And I'll see you next time.